The Haley O Show. Every Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Only on bulls.co.za. For a Friday morning. And our first guest has stepped into studio. Derek. Derek Alberts from Super Sport and the sports guy from Highfelt and the sports guy from Blitz and the sports guy, <laughs> the overall SA sports guy, sports guru, let's call you. Uh, thanks for joining us, Derek. Absolute pleasure, Haley. Just good move to see the you mic a bit closer. How's that? Is that there a bit we better? Go. That's, now I can see you and everyone can hear you. Okay, super. So is it a bit weird being on that side of the interview, you know, being the one being interviewed? It certainly is. And as you'd know, when you, you asked me a couple of days ago, I, I thought, well, there's got to be a catch that doesn't really. <laughs> happen it's always me doing the questions but <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here no we're curious about you we really are and i was telling derek that what i wanted to do was get darren in here as well and have a sports quiz between derek alberts and darren scott i mean oh i think that would be a tough one uh, it certainly would uh, darren does know his sport and uh, we go back a long way as well i think he would I don't know, it would be very, very tight. But on the subject of sports quizzes, I've, I've just got to mention one thing. I do a podcast where once or twice a week um, I actually interview a specific sporting personality out there and I ask them five questions. It's very tongue-in-cheek. And yesterday I had one of my guys uh, go out to Luke Watson, King's captain, and the first question was, who did John T. Rhodes famously run out in 1992 in the World Cup? And the yeah. answer is Inzamam ul Haq, but Luke was like, gee, yeah, I, I don't know, because it's not really one of my, my topics. And in the background, Dimitri Katrakili said, uh, oh, it was Immelman, the golfer. <laughs> the golfer. <laughs> and so that was Luke's answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we'd get answers such as that with you and Darren, <laughs> but maybe we can hook it up sometime soon. We'd love to. But Derek, now, a lot of people, a lot of my guy friends just think you have the dream job. <laughs> Is that what, I mean, do you feel like you have a dream job? I mean, I'm sure it's not all, you know, you know, it's not yeah. all just sport and, and fun. It's, it's, it's certainly something that I, I wanted to do from when I was very young. I, I always wanted to be in sport. I wanted to be a player. My, my sport of choice was rugby. Okay. And I just didn't quite get up to the level where I'd become a professional. Actually, I, I got nowhere near that level. <laughs> and I thought, well, if I can't make it as a player, how do I make it such that my career revolves around sport still and I can still go to games, I can still watch sport for a living? And that's how it ended up being doing what I'm doing. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm very lucky. Uh, I mean, I don't take it for granted whatsoever. And I especially know when I've got a, a large group of friends where we chat almost every day. We've got a big group of guys around the country. And every now and then I'll be watching a match and I say, geez, did you see the try? And the ex are like, well, no, because we're actually in the office <laughs> signing reports <laughs> and things like that. And then it hits home. Well, you know, I am very privileged to be doing what I'm doing. Sure. But there's also, there's a tough side to it. You said, you know, you'd, you don't, you're not always available at this kind of um, time in the morning. Sometimes it's what, hoppers, five wake-ups, call times? Yeah, no, uh, time, I mean, you can, it's, you're not consistent whatsoever in terms of your f availability. Uh, this is certainly a unique experience mm -hmm. being off on a Friday morning, but I'm loving it. Uh, and, you know, it really does become quite tough when you have Australia test matches taking place in Oz and your call time's at midnight oh, and you're geez. getting off a radio show at 7 at night so you get like an hour's sleep. I actually, uh, the, the one uh, repercussion of one of those ma test matches, uh, I, I think I was going down to the fifth day of the opening test, uh, we were playing at the MCG I, I think, and I, my makeup lady was putting in eye drops because obviously I was looking worse for wear. <laughs> yeah. So after the fifth day, I got home, I slept for a couple of hours, woke up, I still had to go to radio and I thought, well, my eyes are lo still looking stuffed. Looking to the cupboard, I found some eye drops, put them in, got to radio, I couldn't read a thing because everything was a big blur. <laughs> oh, so I phoned my wife and I said, I, I don't know what's going on, I can't see anything. And she said, what do you mean? So I said, well... I put in eye drops at home. She goes, no, we don't have eye drops. So I said, no, we do. It said oh, no. eye drops. She goes, no, you put in the stuff for the dogs. <laughs> for, for four days, I couldn't see a thing. I, I could see anything from a meter onwards, but anything from close range, I'll start. Oh, gosh. So it definitely takes its toll. It does. These crazy hours. And, of course, you working on the weekends as well, hey? Yeah, no, without a doubt. And, uh, I mean, if there's super rugby on, uh, I'll be there. So, so weekends are also pretty tough. But, again, I'm not really working. I'm 
I'd be doing that at home anyway. The only difference is there's a camera in front of me now. And you're in a suit. <laughs> exactly. That, that, that makes a big difference. I'm not a suit guy whatsoever. I okay. promise you my persona on TV is very different to what you find off TV. Okay. And the fact that I'm wearing jeans today is also uh, uh, unique because it's rainy. But uh, otherwise, I'm a shorts and slops guy. Okay. All right. So now you, you, you're busy here in Joe, but, you, but you're originally from PE. Yeah. Hence why I'm a shorts and slops guy. <laughs> okay. And tell me, do you, where did you go to school? I went to school not at Grey High. I went to school at <laughs> Victoria Park. Okay. Uh, not renowned for its rugby prowess. Uh, <laughs> one of the many reasons why I didn't uh, become a professional rugby player. But a, a lovely school nonetheless. And do you still play rugby? I saw you tweeting about Cape Town 10s quite a bit. I actually did. Uh, we, we, I hadn't played in a while. And at the beginning of the year, we went down to the Cape Town 10s. Our rugby team is called the Korma Chameleons. Funny enough. Uh, that <laughs> The Korma Chameleons. Yes. The, the, that group of guys, uh, mates that I was telling you about, it all stemmed from from that and we had uh, uh, Ben follow the bounces as one of our, our members as well he played uh, on the wing okay. he actually scored one of the fantastic tries um, our third match uh, at the Cape Town Thames we had won our first two third match we we're down 5-0 with about two minutes to go we're in our own 22 Ben gets the ball on the wing runs through chips over the defenders catches the bounce <laughs> and scores underneath the post we won that game and we ended up uh, going through to the final and we were beaten oh. um, by the the Nados from UCT and I think it shocked everyone as to how well we performed because I promise you a lot of the guys haven't played in years but we will be back next year and we're actually in discussions with the guys from the Rhino Foundation to, to have a, a bit of a charity element to it so I'm looking forward to that each oh. try uh, companies donate money to the Rhino Fund which of course is a very good fund Don't underestimate the Cormac Chameleons <laughs> but I'm glad that you actually remember which games you won and lost because I've spoken to guys that go down for that Cape Town's 10 weekend <laughs> and they don't remember much Yeah, Well I've got to be honest because that first match when we played we were just playing in the year for the beer league so our opponents were really there for the beer <laughs> and we won our first game and we won it quite comfortably and <laughs> i was captain by default and i said uh, to the guys well, look we're actually pretty good no drinking we're going to take this seriously oh, so geez. our position we're getting trashed uh for the next two days well we were actually taking things very seriously if you're sober you have a huge advantage there uh, no ex <laughs> exactly so I, I think it did play into our hands completely but uh by the end of it, we did partake in, in the, the main sponsor's beverage, but uh, that was once the final whistle was blown. Okay, very professional, very professional. And um, just tell me, for those, for those people who kind of follow you and follow what you do, how did you get into sports broadcasting? I mean, you grew up in PE and now you're here in Joburg working for Supersport. Yeah, well, years and years ago, I, uh, I won a, a competition on Mnet um, and... It so happened that I, I ended up being on TV. Where I, was, I think I was in matric. It was a show called Live at Five. Oh, I remember Live at Five yes. with John Flissman. That's exactly yeah. it. And uh, him and Candace Derman. So yes. it was myself and another lady. We won this competition at some modeling thing. And we, Sorry, what? Uh, and we ended up <laughs> being interviewed on that. And it was live TV and the bug bit. And I, I remember speaking about it at the time, saying that, you know, I, I want to go into rugby or, or something to do with that. And I remember following that we had a, a modeling shoot. And it was myself and three other guys. And the other guys were Pucker models. And it, I'll never forget it. It was the opening match of the 1999 Rugby World Cup. Uh, the R Rugby World Cup. Argentina were playing Wales and we were in Cape Town doing the shoot. And I said to the guys, listen, we've got to finish up because the match is on the go. These other acts didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> and, and, and secondly, they said, geez, we can't drink. You know, it will damage our skin. And I said, no, this isn't for me. But I did like the TV side of things. And from okay. there, I went into my varsity radio station. Then I went into okay. the commercial aspect in, in PE. And then when she came up to Joburg. Okay. I can relate to that. Um, enjoying sport, but studying a drama at drama school. You know, there'll be a World Cup final on and like things will just carry on yes. as normal. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no one gets it uh, unless you do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but you said that the, you know, the bug bit of live TV and now with all the super rugby games that, you know, your links and your studio um, presenting that all live i mean do you do you get nervous before live broadcasts or what goes on behind the scenes that we don't quite know about i always say to people that you if you don't get nervous then you probably it's not for you because you don't, if you, you don't, don't have, care enough yeah that's exactly it and i think if you don't have that element of nervousness in you then you, you, then you don't care and it's you you are constantly on your game which makes a big difference and it takes a little getting used to. You've constantly got a director in your ear chatting and you've got to chat to your guests as well and speak to camera on top of all this. But you get used to it, but the nerves never settle. I mean, you always 
consistently aware that there are uh, thousands of people out there watching. Uh, maybe in my case, tens. But <laughs> it is there, and, sure. and you've got to know that. So, so I, I love it. I mean, live TV, there's no bigger rush. And now, during the game, so you chat to us at halftime and before the, and after the game. During the game, are you guys making notes or are you discussing between oh, each other? Oh, without a doubt. I mean... No, we, we sit in studio and we watch the, the matches uh, from start to finish. And, I mean, we've got like three or four TVs all around, so it's hard so. to miss it. And I tell you what, there's no better guy to watch rugby with than Nas Puerta. Really? He... I remember someone telling me how he used to play the game. He was just a genius in terms of he could look up and in that split second he could tell exactly what was happening throughout the field. He knew where players were. You just have a special talent when it comes to that. And I think it applies also when he's a spectator because really? he'll find things and he'll ask the the guys that are working back in the back to, to just rewind. He goes, look here, look here. I mean, we would not spot it whatsoever. Sure. Uh, he's a great guy to watch with. And so, I mean, you you do a lot of interviews with, with sports personalities and past players like Nas. Is, um, are, the, are any of them like part of your friendship circle? Uh, do you hang out with sportsmen or is it more kind of a work-related? I, I don't hang out with them per se but I, I do keep in contact with them uh, John Mitchell he's often on Supersport yeah. and he's a great guy he actually messaged me today asking where am I uh, in terms of studio I'll be back there tomorrow okay. but he the other day now I've got at home I've got a library and I've got a pub and in my library Very is just important. packed with sports biographies and my pub is just packed with sporting memorabilia <laughs> so I'm always trying to get new stuff and, and stock it and I'm always asking my guests, you know, if there's anything from your playing days that you might uh, donating to, to the pub. <laughs> and, and John, the other day, he said, no, Derek, I'll, I'll find you something. <laughs> and uh, he came around and he brought me the Carol Boyer's mug that they gave to the winning side for winning the Curry Cup. And that was back in 2011 when the Lions won. He was coaching the team. Oh, yeah. So I've got this Carol Boyer's Curry Cup mug. And he was prepared to just give that away. Yeah, he did. He gave me his old, oh, well, I'm not going to drink from it. Oh, this, yeah. <laughs> very nice. And does he have a wife that knows about that? Here's another story. <laughs> uh, I got married not too long ago, just yes. over a year ago in Neisner. And the guys who did my wedding video, uh, I still show everyone that I can find because it's on my iPad and it's about three minutes long, but it's such a well done video. So the other day, John and I were sitting there in the studio. I said, oh, John, have a look at this. And I showed him. And he was so impressed. And he actually didn't stop talking about it. So I saw him a week later. And he goes, oh, Derek, you know, remember the day you showed me the video? So I said, yeah. He goes, I went home that day and proposed to my girlfriend. So, <laughs> so he's just got engaged. He has. He has. And they've actually set a date for later this year. So mm. congratulations, John. But I... Uh, I'd like to think I've played a small part in, ah, in that proposal. We're getting the inside scoop here with Derek, Derek Alberts in studio. And like you said, he recently got married. So we'll chat to you. Let's play a song and we'll chat to you a little more after this. Visual Perfect. Radio chatting to Derek Alberts in studio. And we just got a tweet from Ben saying that we're talking about very girly stuff. What's yeah, only... I spoke about him. That's why I <laughs> he was on the wing. Well, Ben, it's only going to get worse because I'm moving on to wedding talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, Derek, you recently got married. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. When, when was that that you got married? Uh, it was last year in Feb in Neisner. Okay, so it's already a... Just over a year. Oh, Just over okay, a year, so yeah. it isn't that recent. Mm. Okay. And tell me now, does Ane like sport? She loved it. Uh, she, we actually met uh, at Centurion in 2009 at the Champions Trophy. Oh, was she? Was she, she was running the media center, oh. and she was being hit on by every man and sundry. In fact, Ravi Shastri, I don't think he watched much of the cricket. He spent the entire time chatting to her. But you won. <laughs> I did eventually. <laughs> cool. Okay, so she does like sports, and she appreciates your pub at home and your sports library. And Yeah, she does. Uh, she's got the rest of the house. So <laughs> I, well, actually, no, the library is also hers. I get the pub. <laughs> <laughs> and what is she, how does she feel about you working on the weekends? Oh, well, um, she gets to see me at least. Uh, but, but again, it's not that long, so I get home. And, and when I do have free time, we manage to, to go away often, so I, I like to travel as much as possible. So she'd prefer to have me at home, but, I mean, I think this is the next best thing. Okay. And now, Derek, um, you do know that when, if anyone Googles you, um, yeah. Your best men speeches and your groomsmen speech are there for everyone to see. <laughs> I really felt like I'd hit gold <laughs> when I googled Derek Alberts. And you're a bit of a romantic. 
Uh, I am. I'd, I'd like to think so. Although, uh, after Ben's tweet, I'm a bit worried uh, how much of a romantic I, I can go into. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't save much face because I'm about to play the end of your groomsman <laughs> speech where he speaks about his wife, Anae. Listen up. And last, but definitely not least, my amazing, amazing angel. About uh, two and a half years ago, I walked into Centurion Cricket Stadium for those that haven't read the blurb on the internet of how we met, walked in there, I didn't feel like being there, and I saw this girl, and she had the most incredible smile on her face. She thought I was an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> but that's... <laughs> I managed to get around that. I didn't o offer to fix her car or anything like that, so I kind of... I sold her the deal. But I simply couldn't take my eyes off her for the duration of the tournament. It was about two weeks long, and every single day, all I did was stare at her. I watched no sport, and for me to not watch sports is an impossibility. It, those two weeks, I simply did that. I tried and tried and tried and tried to get her over to a restaurant, Roger. And uh, <laughs> she wouldn't budge. Simply wouldn't budge. And, um, geez, by hook or by crook, I actually got her there. And uh, I made her my phenomenal seafood uh, spread, and then I threw away the ocean box baskets. <laughs> and... Um, Ocean basket boxes. <laughs> and uh, I had a hook, line, and sinker, excuse the pun. But uh, it's been an incredible journey, my love. And every step of the way. And like I said to her, my folks get married in Neisner. We've got a long family tradition. And I didn't necessarily have to sell her the idea about getting married here, but we did. I did propose to her here. And she to agree to it. And I'm so, so glad you did, my love. We couldn't have a better venue. And I couldn't have a better person that I'm speaking to right now. You've been incredible. The smile on your face, the look in your eyes, and that sense of humor. And I really can't go a day without seeing you. And I went a week now, and it was absolute, absolute torture. I love you with all my heart, and I promise you I'm here to stay. And I'll never, ever, ever leave. And uh, Francesca and Roger, fortunately, I'm, I'm here to stay too. And I'll treat your daughter well. I can guarantee that. I love you, my baba. And thank you for saying yes, and thank you for being in. Thanks, that's about sums it up. Thank you all for being here. Have a terrific evening. Ah. <laughs> You've just got a whole lot more female fans from those right. few minutes. Cheers, thanks. There's also a lot of footage on YouTube of me playing rugby as well. <laughs> just want to throw that. <laughs> no, no, it does look like a, a great venue and looks like you all had a good evening. Yeah, it was a great night. Uh, okay, but now tell me, so you said that, you know, when um, your your wife does enjoy uh, sport, but when you guys aren't kind of uh, catching up on sport or you're not working, what do you like doing in your spare time? In my spare time? Yeah. I, I like swimming uh, a hell of a lot, uh, I've, although I don't get to do it much, but squash, I try and play as much squash as I can. Uh, I think with the amount of squash that I play, I'm terrible. Uh, I should be provincial given the amount of time that I spend on the court, but uh, I'm not really that good whatsoever. Uh, I'm actually a bit of a nerd when it comes to books. I read a uh, copious amount of books. There's always about four or five books uh, next to me. and You I like haven't gone Kindle? I actually have, oh, okay. but but again, a Kindle doesn't look good in the library, so <laughs> it's so hard to go past a bookshop for me and not go in and at least come out with three or four books, but uh, I'm getting better. <laughs> okay. And, and traveling, I, I love going away. That's uh, my number one thing. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Well, Derek, it's really nice to catch up with you. Thank you for coming into studio. It's nice to kind of get, you know, a bit of background behind the voice that we hear every weekend. Uh, last few questions. If you could be Messi, Adam Scott, or Jacques Cullis, who would you be? Oh, without a doubt, uh, Jacques Cullis. Jacques Cullis. Yeah, no, uh -huh. definitely. Well, firstly, he's South African. I, I want to be a South African. Plus, he's, in my mind, the greatest cricketer that's ever lived. And he's a great guy to boot as well. Adam Scott's a good-looking guy. Not that you're uh, not. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, no, that's fine. But he's only got one green jacket to his name. Jacques Cullis has got, what, 13,000 runs now. Uh, copious amount of wickets, and he's brilliant. So I'll go for Jacques Cullis. Okay. And I think I'm also getting a receding hairline. <laughs> okay. And you can always get the implant. <laughs> yeah. <I can. laughs> um, all right. Premier League. Which team? I'm actually not a big football fan okay. whatsoever. Uh, but if I had to pick one, Chelsea. Uh, I don't really have a reason why. I just kind of <laughs> wanted to go against all my mates, and they were all either Manchester United or Arsenal. But I really, uh, I'd rather do much 
more other things than watch football, to be okay, honest. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Super 15 team, can you say? Yeah, I can. Um, well, Sharks. I'm a Sharks guy, but I must say I'm loving the Kings. And fair enough, because I'm from the PE. P- yeah. And Sharks, the history behind the Sharks is obviously because Sharks were part of um, the Eastern Cape franchise because when Super Rugby originally became a franchise system, uh, Sharks amalgamated with Border and uh, EP. Okay. So it goes from way back when. It's not because I just wanted to sign that we're good. <laughs> so you're quite a proud local PE guy. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, I certainly am. Nice. I, I really enjoy it when PE guys do well. Uh, and uh, Kobani Bobo, he's a PE guy. So we often spend a lot of time together. Okay. And uh, there's a few of us around. And you'll be surprised <laughs> how many people are actually from the Eastern Cape. <laughs> okay. Um, tennis player, favorite tennis player? Roger Federer. Oh, me too. Yeah. Me too. I, I met his old man uh, a couple of years ago. Sorry, this is a bit rude. And I we were down in the Eastern Cape. They're opening. So, which is his parent that's South It's African? his mom. Oh, his mom's South African. From Benoni. Okay. And. Yeah, sorry, this is a bit rude. What what happened was, so I met the old man, and I knew that they'd obviously had a history of South Africa, but now we're in Motherwell in Port Elizabeth looking at these courts, and I said to him, you know, do you, have you been to, to here before, and to PE? And he said, I was living in George when you were still in your dad's ball bag. So, yes. <laughs> oh, cool, because you can't imagine, like, Roger cracking a joke like that, hey? No, not even close, but his dad certainly can. Maybe it's just not a side of him we see. Yeah, I think that's that applies to a lot of the guys, actually. Yeah. You know? In front of the camera and off camera, I think they're very different people. Very different. Okay, and favorite golfer? Uh, favorite <laughs> golfer, geez, it, it switches a lot. But Who uh, is your money on in the Masters? Oh, man, um, Brandon Grace. Uh, okay. purely because I think he's a phenomenal player and he, he will get a, a major uh, sooner rather than later but my favourite golf at the moment so I'd have to go with Louis Oersteisen ok cool keeping it local yes and last question because you auditioned me for Lady Rugga or actually you were there when I auditioned yes. for Lady Rugga and what sticks in my mind the most is the shoes that you were wearing you had quite fancy like shiny shoes Did on I? they were quite pointy as well <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I'm interested. Um, I found it interesting that you said you're a shorts and yeah. you know jeans kind of guy. Um, so the last question I have for you is tag or Rolex? Oh, geez. Uh, I'm not even wearing a watch now. Uh, I'll have to go for guess because my wife got me a guess watch. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about watches. I'm completely okay. opposite to what, you, what I said there. Well, I judged you by your shoes and oh. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's fine. <laughs> go for it. It shows how clueless I am when it comes to things like that. I really had no idea. They were black shoes. I put them on. Seemed the right thing to do. <laughs> well, at the I'm time. sure you got a few brownie points for saying yes. <laughs> but yeah, have a great weekend and Thank nice you. to catch up with you and hope to speak to you soon. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Haley. It's been cool. a pleasure. Cool. The Haley O Show every Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Only on balls.co.za.